Let's head off to the Silver Shamrock Mask Making Factory. Let's get into it. Hey, welcome back to my channel. Hope everyone's doing well out there. And as we all know by looking at the calendar, we are into October, my favorite time of the year. And we're going chugging along here with more horror reviews. And today we're going to revisit the first film I think I've ever reviewed for this channel was the film we're going to talk about today, Halloween 3 Season of the Witch. This film came out on October 22nd of 1982. Now, the second film was very successful. The studio wanted John Carpenter to write and produce, and Deborah Hill to write and produce a third film in the franchise. John Carpenter was not interested in continuing the Michael Myers storyline because in his mind, they were treading the same ground in Halloween 2, and they definitively got rid of Michael Myers in the Halloween 2, which honestly, I love the Halloween franchise, but they could have ended after part two and it would have been a fitting ending to Michael Myers. So they had an idea, him and Deborah Hill, to make an anthology film every Halloween. They could, it can go off in any direction it wanted to do, as long as it dealt with the holiday of Halloween. And the studio said, okay, let's do it. And they gave him two and a half million dollars to come up to shoot Halloween 3 season of The Witch. Now John Carpenter had no interest in directing this film. And on the second film, they wanted Tommy Lee Wallace to direct. He turned it down because he felt it treaded a lot of the same ground as the first film as well. And on the first film, he was very instrumental in the film because he edited Halloween 1. He was the set designer and he found the mask for Michael Myers. So he, and he was friends with John Carpenter for years and helped John Carpenter out in the fog after Halloween. So he was somebody that was close in this tight knit little filmmaking family. So when the third film came about, John offered the film to Tommy Lee Wallace and he accepted. Now, they had brought in Nigel Neal. He was a British horror sci-fi writer John Carpenter really admired and to write the script for Halloween 3. Now, nobody was completely satisfied with that script. They said it was very dark. And this film is kind of very dark, the subject matter anyway. John Carpenter rewrote the script and then Tommy Lee Wallace rewrote John Carpenter's rewrite. Although, I, from what they say, Nigel Neal's main ideas are still in the film, but Tommy Lee Wallace got the sole writing credit, and he even says in the documentary that it's the most absurd credit in film history in terms of writing credit, because it wasn't just him that wrote the script, but anyway, he got the writing credit. Now, again, they had two and a half million dollars to shoot this film. This film came out October 22nd of 1982, and upon release, it made $14.4 million. So it did make money, but not as much as the first two films. That's why John Carpenter and Deborah Hill got bought out of the franchise and they rebooted in 88 with Halloween 4, although Michael Myers did take a long rest until we got part 4, The Return of Michael Myers. Now, in this film, we have the great Tom Atkins as Dr. Daniel Chalice, and he is phenomenal in this film. And the lovely Stacey Nelkin plays Ellie. And the awesome and always reliable Daniel Hurley plays Colonel Proc Cochran. And he is our main bad guy, as we find out throughout the film. And basically this film, in the beginning of the film, we see this man running down this road with holding something in his hand. And I remember as a kid, I never knew there was a Halloween 3. I was a big fan of 1 and 2. And for all you young, younger folks out there that aren't used to getting a TV guide and newspaper every Sunday, I used to plan out, especially in October, what movies were coming on that week that were horror films that I could watch. And I, it was a surprise to me because back then there was no internet, obviously. And really, unless you read a magazine, you didn't know the new movies coming out unless you saw it advertised. And I never saw a trailer for Halloween 3 back then. And I saw Halloween 3's on, I don't remember what night it was, say Thursday night, 8 o'clock. And I said, oh, i got to sit down and watch this. I didn't know. I wanted to see what happens to Michael Myers. And when I sat down to watch the film and the beginning happens and we see this old man running down, or this older gentleman running down the street. And then we see these guys after him. I'm like, where the hell is Michael Myers? Now... For years, I hated this film because Michael Myers isn't in it. And it definitely subverts your expectations because you expect Michael Myers. They didn't make clear in the advertising campaign back then that there was no Michael Myers in it. But after about watching the film for about 15 minutes, you clearly get the idea that Michael Myers has nothing to do with this film. But I've, become, I've come to appreciate this film over years, so let's get into it some more. This man gets attacked by these men at this junkyard and he gets away, ends up at this gas station, and he passes out. He gets taken to the hospital, so we're introduced to Dr. Daniel Chalice, played by the great Tom Atkins, and he is great in this film. Although not the best doctor, or husband, probably, or ex-husband, father, probably. And he treats this man, and he's in the hospital bed, and this gentleman shows up in a nice business suit, snaps this guy's nose, walks out, 
chased by Daniel Chalice, gets in the car, pours gas in on herself, and blows himself up in a car. Weird as shit, right? Yes, it is. This movie is very weird, but awesome as well. Um, so the cops show up, and Dr. Chalice has to talk to him, you know, tell him what happened, what he witnessed, you know, even though he doesn't know really what the hell's going on. All he knows is this guy came on the holding a Halloween mask, telling him we're all going to die. Or they're going to kill us all. And this guy shows up in the middle of the night, kills the guy, and blows himself into the parking lot. Next day, Ellie shows up, played by Stacey Nelkin, who is absolutely cute as hell in this film. And it's her father, and she's wondering what the hell happened. And Dr. Chalice really doesn't know. He's, he's as clueless as anybody else, but he's smitten with Ellie because kind of, he fancies himself a ladies' man. He's a divorced father of two. And we get the sense right away that he, he definitely doesn't have a good relationship with his ex-wife. And he's kind of estranged from this because he's in their lives, but he blows them off a lot to go drinking. This man definitely likes to drink and smoke. He's not a very good doctor, but it's Tom Atkins, so we love him anyway. And they go off to this little town where Silver Shamrock Novelties is, because that's the last place she figures her father was before he showed up at Daniel Charles's hospital. So they show up, they pose as a couple, they meet Connell Cochran, they take a, a tour of the factory with these other, this other couple that's a businessman owns a store that sells masks. And right away you get to sense something is off about Connell Cochran and this little town. Um, and they definitely show that by showing everybody looking through windows at all small towns. People are very nosy. I grew up in a small town and they're always watching out to see what's going on, especially when there's strangers around. And we get that sense right away. And basically we find out through this film that um, Colin Cochran is very steeped in witchcraft and he, the stars are aligned right and he wants to have a sacrifice like they used to back in the homeland in Ireland to ward off evil spirits these pagan rituals that Halloween was built off of. And they do go into the lore. De Connell Cochran definitely goes into it when he's talking to Dr. Chalice about his evil plan. He explains to Dr. Chalice that they stole a piece of Stonehenge and he says, they don't really, he doesn't give away how they got it there. He just says, we had a, a hell of a time getting it here. And just a little bit holds magic that they can control for this one night with the stars aligned. And their plan is, because this company has been advertising this big giveaway at nine o'clock and telling all the kiddies that have the mask to be sitting around watching it. And we see demonstrationists um, with little Buddy who gets killed with by the mask in front of his parents in a very horrific scene that he's going to kill tens of thousands of children as his sacrifice and he goes on about how back in our day the hills would run, run red the last time we did this and Dr. Chalice escapes him and Ellie although by this point Ellie is not what she seems and we get that great final shot of Tom Atkins screaming into the camera Stop it, stop it, as he's trying to get the uh, TV stations to stop playing the ad because he knows what's going to happen. And back then there was only three major networks, so he got two to take it off in the last one, and the last shot is Tom Atkins looking right in the camera and screaming, Stop it! It's fantastic ending. Love the ending. Now, like I said, when I was a kid, I hated this film because my expectations were Michael Myers was going to be the main villain, not this old man who's of Irish descent who is uh, practicing pagan witchcraft. But over the years, somewhere in the late 90s, I started to appreciate this film more. I had watched it a couple other times. I rented it from the video store to see if I felt differently about it. Because it does, it's definitely steeped in Halloween. And it has Halloween all over. It feels like Halloween time in this film. I love the setting. I love the atmosphere. And this film shot by Dean Connie, who shot Halloween 1 and Halloween 2. So it very much looks like and feels like Carpenter's original film, for sure. And Tommy Lee Wallace does a nice job with the directing. But I've come to appreciate this film over the years. I actually really, really love this film for what it is. Is, it the, is this a great horror film? No, but I have a soft spot for this film. It's like the little film that could. It was the bastard step stepchild for years in the Halloween franchise. Now there's way worse sequels in this franchise. You got Resurrection, which is a dumpster fire. Um, Halloween 5, I, I like Halloween 5, but it's not the greatest. But overall, I like the atmosphere. I love the masks. There's one of them right there. There's a skull mask, and then there's the witch mask. But I really do like this film. It's a very dark and evil film. Colin Cochran is definitely an evil bastard. But I do love one thing. I mean, Daniel Harley's performance is fantastic. He's great. He's menacing. Most people remember him from Robocop as the old man. But on Halloween morning, after they caught Tom Atkins, and they're going to, you know, they plan on killing him, but they want him to witness what's going to happen. Um... He walks outside that morning and he kind of has a, a skip to his step. Like he's happy. It's Halloween morning. This is his time to shine. And he definitely portrays himself as this happy-go-lucky man. But then when he's telling Tom Atkins about his plan and about 
he's going to kill the children. He turns on a dime and he feels very sinister and very evil. Like truly evil. He wants to kill all these children, which is nothing more evil than that in this world, right? So his plan is definitely not, he's not a nice guy overall. And I love his performance. I love Tom Atkins' performance. Again, Tom Atkins is not a great doctor in this film. He's a womanizer for sure. He's just trying to get, he only goes to this town to try to get laid. I mean, he's semi-curious and he's, a, he, Tom Atkins gives a great performance. He's semi-curious about what's going on. Hey everyone, you'll notice a change of scenery. Uh, my son and a bunch of his friends came up and interrupted me while I was shooting. So I'm out here to finish off this review because I have nowhere else to shoot right now. So yes, anyway, Halloween 3 season of which the end of the film, I love Cochran's plan. Yes, there are some plot holes in it for sure, but I think the music's great by John Carpenter and Alan Haworth. Um, I love the direction. I love the way it's shot. I think it's a beautifully shot film by Dean Cundy. I love the effects. The, most of the effects come off pretty damn well. I love the cast. AC Nelkin's fantastic. Daniel Hurley's great. Tom Atkins is great. Um, you get a cameo by Dick Warlock and as playing two different characters, two different robots, because we find out that he's also a toy maker and he makes these robots that are his helpers to to build these things and make these masks. So that's pretty cool. Overall, I wish this concept would have worked. I love the Homie franchise and I love the character of Michael Myers, but this is such an interesting uh, premise to make a Halloween type film every year that can go off in any direction at once. I wish it's something they would have revisited. Um, they could have had like an offshoot of films and still did the Michael Myers stuff. But I think the thing that most people will, would say about this film is it would have been more successful if it was called Season of the Witch instead of Halloween 3. And I think I totally agree on that. If you ever watched the trailer, the trailers are kind of ambiguous if Michael Myers is in it or not. And I think the studio probably got cold feet knowing that, oh crap, we don't have our main antagonist that we did in the other two films. And this film's a little weird because it's a small little weird film, but I, I've grown to love it over the years. I really like this film. A matter of fact, I like it that much. I would give it an eight and a half out of 10. It's really grown on me since the, since the late eighties when I first saw it. So yeah, eight and a half out of 10 for Halloween three. What are your thoughts on Halloween 3? Do you Has it grown on you over the years, or do you still hate this film? Leave a comment down below. Let me know. There's no right or wrong answers here because film is subjective. Hit the thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button. Share this video. I agree. would appreciate that. I'll be back later in the week with some more reviews. Until then, bye.